Firewolves looked a lot tighter in that last game. Again, the trend of teams improving and playing better as the tournament goes on is not surprising. So we'll see what's in store now with this champ select. Ezreal Bent once again away from Titan. And Kaisa also going to get her customary red side ban. Yeah, you have to remove the Kaiser. We haven't seen many Caitlyn bans as of late as well, so I would not be surprised to see that once again go through. It's the rest of the rust that you look towards. The Vladimirs have been target banned from certain people, not so much in this game. LeBlanc may actually see the bench, given how well Jinkedo was playing it. Feels pretty game. safe to me, to be honest, as yeah. Rakan is going to get banned away by Kaboom Swain. The second ban there for Pentagram as they look for their third. And it's interesting to think that bot lane, maybe the status quo is changing a little bit. Rakan obviously still kind of ruling the roost there in some ways, but lots of more aggression, at least right now in the tournament. More Threshers, more Leonas, a lot of Ignites, and just the more aggressive ADs. Caitlyn is kind of struggling against a lot of the pressure that teams are willing to throw at her as Morgana also receiving, I think, a much-deserved ban as well. Yeah, definitely true. Of course, Thresh, one of the bans they did in their last game against Supermassive was a target ban and this is one of those instances where the way Rhea have played it almost commanding of that of course on the opposite side they do get rid of the gangplank this ban is out of necessity as well it just shows how strong that champion is and the fact that the direwolves did actually let that one go through they played a very risky game there in the draft they were made to pay for it with how good Zantine was yeah a little over a thousand dpm I believe from Zantine's top five dpm in 2018 for gangplanks in the world so that was the performance from him most certainly as first pick thresh nice instincts mr pi i mean Rhea was just too good on it how do you not go for that focus right if you give it to him one more time you're playing a risky game thresh Jin very easily would have been the duo lane of course we saw Chitan play the Jin. perhaps they want to deny that combo themselves maybe yutori has been pretty uh pretty frisky in the bot lane wanting to be aggressive there but i like the takeaway game of course experience on the champion almost every support i feel like at this level has played at least enough thresh it's just so fun rusty yeah. but there is the gene you expected from titan high skill champion of course you have to be good at thresh to make thresh work this is why i don't play thresh <laughs> <laughs> i will i refrain from comment on your player skill but there's a gin locked in moving forward his thresh by the way very good for everyone playing at home is alistar actually Going to take a page of the Cupcakes book from last game, still sticking with the theme of aggressive support champions. Really good duo lane with the Jin. When you actually look towards the Thresh, you can take it down very easily. Jungle intervention always helps secure kills, not just the one, but potentially the two. We'll have to see where they actually go here and what the focus is going to be. The Trundle wasn't banned, so perhaps this is a blind pick from once, knowing full well what could be picked against and him. They're actually Caitlyn here for you, Tori, so they're kind of sticking to the the later carry with good early lane presence could struggle in the aggressive Jin Alstar lane maybe with Thresh taking even it out we're gonna go aggressive on the jungler front though I love this from Ranger loves his aggressive style but once also says all right I'll take Graves you take Kha'Zix cool let's have some fun it looks like they're gonna be meeting each other in the jungle that's for certain Kha'Zix loves to be aggressive and deal some damage with the Alistar already there in the bottom lane that makes a lot of sense that you can pick damage and look towards that lane as a place to gank Xantines may actually be going towards something like the tanks perhaps in the top lane Bit of crowd control. Zoe's also your stock standard, ridiculously good mid laner with a Kha'Zix burst. Well, there's Nar banned away from Paz. Played it a lot. He's gonna lose it here, and I, I like this respect as well from Ramune. He's like, yeah, that LeBlanc was pretty good. Gonna just uh, tick that one off in the ban column. But uh, like you mentioned, Zoe, just kind of opened that pick up here with the LeBlanc band away. Not sure Ramune's exact proficiency on the champion, but is a counter pick that Jinkato himself has already shown up as Syndra. And respect on the opposite side for mid will be banned away. For me, this is one of those moments where if Ramune can play the likes of a Vladimir, then he may actually be in a very good position. But the crowd control is sorely lacking from their entire team. So you may even go to the likes of the Karma, not that there's an abundance of crowd control, but enabling, giving the Graves move speed so that he can deal damage. Getting in and out of combat consistently would do wonders for them as well. It's a matter of direction for Pentagram, for Kaboom. They would love one extra tank. Ooh, insta, insta luck blind Vladimir there from Jinkato. He said maybe, hey, none of they play it. Well, you've been answered as Cassio got banned and Vlad got snatched up immediately. Yeah, they don't get a choice, so perhaps Kaboom knew and they wanted to prevent that from being picked or they just wanted the damage for themselves. That would be amusing on the opposite side. It is the standard matchup, of course, into the Vladimir. Yeah, perfectly fine, but Karma's win rate has gone up slightly. GBM actually did pick up Mid Karma's first win of the tournament. I feel like Paz should go on once again. They need something to round their composition out. Both teams do, in fact, through the top lane. Some kind of tanky teleporter would do wonders. They could commit to a split pusher, perhaps force a split pusher out of their opponents as well. 
But I prefer to see the Cyan on in this instance. And that's the first and last time I'll ever say I prefer to see that. Well, there's on, so you have your wish for this game as Pentagram round out their composition quite nicely. Kinda like the Graves as well to supplement some of the extra damage. As Karma Mid is. does want to often go utility. I'm sure we'll see Banner of Command this game. We're expecting Xanteens to get in there. That's cute. But I kinda hope he goes Jace. I mean, Conqueror, yes, I'll be happy if he goes Yasuo too. He could go mid lane into the Karma. Whoa, okay. Let him hit top. Yeah, we're gonna right? see the Vlad. <laughs> but Talia is the thing that they supplement and round out their entire composition with here. It's a lot of utility from the Karma with, uh, from the Talia with the wall. There's the shove, but when you look at the raw crowd control that that team has, it's Rehev and Titan. If Rehev and Chitan, rather, can actually get themselves unlocked and around the rest of the map, they could snowball for sure. Otherwise, maybe a tough one again. Not opting for a tank in this kind of spot does do some team fight discrepancies, but we'll have to see. Pentagram, I think, drafting again very comfortably. I do like more aggression from one tonight. Junglers in general often have aggressive streaks, and I like that both once and Ranger are kind of picking that back up. I'm not saying I don't like seeing Jungle Trundle, but I am happy teams are going away from it. Because it's just a bit more fun. It is interesting, of course, to have the Graves blind pick, the aggressive jungler, the pushing jungler blind picked. Well, we'll see what happens here. Again, Pentagram out, but playing for some pride and also to play spoiler to everybody else on the other side there for Kaboom. Trying to pick up more wins and honestly give themselves a shot at coming out in this group in first. Yeah, definitely going to be a scary thing here. First place, can Kaboom actually even fight for it or will Pentagram defuse that completely? Well, going to be tough to see. We'll have to find out in just a short moment, but so far so good there for Kaboom. Been looking pretty strong in these stages. The Pentagram, again, every team is improving, so curious to see kind of what shakes out here. And Interesting spanner kind of in the works there from the other side, but to hear more about the Brazilian team's journey to MSI, let's send it over to Medic and Kaboom's coach. Thank you very much. I'm joined by Nuddle, Kaboom's coach. Now, Nuddle, as a team, you've come up through relegation. You're now at an international event once again. How is the team dealing with the pressure of knowing you need to win every game? I mean, we approach the day with the optic that at this point we have nothing to lose, but everything to prove. A lot of people saw us as one of the top two contenders in this group with Supermassive. And I mean, if we started the day on the wrong foot, there would be no contesting. So we came here with the optic to play our macro, play our game, and hopefully it transfers into a 2-0, into a suicide match if we get some uh, help from Direwolves. Well, good luck in the game today. Hope you, you get those wins and we see that suicide match. Thank you. Well, we're back on the Summoner's Rift. Lovely to hear from Manic and Nuttall, the coach of Kaboom. Like you said, might as well come up with nothing to lose. Turns out teams play a lot better when that happens. Absolutely. Everyone with their backs against the wall. Nerves is always a bigger thing than you ever get to see. That's because it's invisible to you, of course. You're watching the games play. You see mistakes. You never see how the nerves actually influence those mistakes. But so far, so good from Kaboom coming into today. Getting that victory, actually getting momentum. Speaking of a team that has nothing to lose, Pentagram against them. We have the inciting some cheers from the crowd. Oh, boy. This is one of the benefits to picking Alistar. <laughs> I do have to point that out. There's always a constant debate about which skin of that Alistar is yeah, the best one. That skin's obviously the best, but which Chroma is yeah, the yeah, best? Yeah, sorry, the Chroma. That one is top percent, though. That is. Oh, it's so good. Well, it looks like an invade, actually, here. Onto the red buff. Has and wants. Imagine Ranger has this kind of figured out, though, so probably just some vertical jungle action. You know, definitely a, a known factor, of course, having a Graves and wanting to invade. Ranger, you can see from his positioning, of course, very aware of that fact. We'll just be going red to red on the opposite side. Graves is one of those champions that can be a little bit cheeky. As you can see, that ward actually doesn't spot him. It means that Pentagram know, they just didn't know that he was there already. Yeah. So the next decision that we see from them may actually be super curious about this. Because he may just be into bottom lane and get a free gank off. He was there faster than the wards could be. Yep, level two with double buffs. There is a ward there, but not around the side they want. That's not going to be a four-man bottom lane at level two. I mean, they're going to try it. Gang all in trouble, in low, so much trouble. That's an easy first blood for Ranger. They don't even need Jinketo. He's just walking down the river, wasting a little bit of time. He got some sightseeing for the rest of his team as they get that early kill. That's just super cute, honestly, from the side of Kaboom. And it was already done even without Ranger there. The damage was dealt. 
It's just the secure available from this Kha'Zix. Super well done. Yep, hits the Q button, gets a kill. Feels pretty good as Kha'Zix. So first blood over quickly to Ranger, who could wrap things up once again, trying to farm things out. Does have a farm lead as expected, given the decision Ranger made, but really nice reaction to the early red invade. We've seen this once before from the side of Kaboom, but it was towards the top lane. That was where the gank was. Then it started to snowball against them after that top lane gank and it wasn't found to be successful. This time around, he knows which lane he should be going towards. And we said this in the draft phase, you unlock the bottom lane, you unlock the crowd control duo of the Jin and the Alistar, you give them momentum in any way to leave and help you, or you give them strength to come back down there a million times over. You get fed, that's your win condition for the Kaboom side. Oh, he's gonna lose it. No, Ranger does get it. He's gonna get the last hit on, but one's actually gonna chase him level four with red buff. And he's a grave, so it does force him out a little bit, especially with Romane pushing the mid lane. You are seeing some of the side effects, of course, of what happens to Akazix when he goes to single camps and then leaves after getting a gank. The gold's nice for him, it'll give him an influx of damage, but he has no control of the jungle if he finds the graves. He's completely pushed out. Oh, good hook. Oh, does actually duke out the trap, not quite properly placed there from Mutori. He's in for top lane, wants another gank off. Got a red buff, he's only level 3, Paz is like, yeah, I'm out of there. Ranger's like, yeah, me too. That's one of the trades that isn't ideal for Ranger, but you take that as well if you were Xantine. You, you've acknowledged that you've actually forced a lot of mana and perhaps another potion out of Paz. He had a cookie, so he used his cookie. They are delicious. <laughs> I have found my hey, biscuits are cookies. That's, me. That's a biscuit. All right. I just kind of said cookie and had to roll with it. Just wanted to make sure we're still... Retaining the strength of our heritage, Rusty. As a uh, pressure here from Caitlyn. Could be Lamingtons. Ooh, that was good. I don't think anyone has a Lamington in Berlin, unfortunately. For those of you who don't know what that is, Google it. It is delicious, even though it looks a bit weird. I promise. As Rumi roaming himself down, finds a ward, slams it down. Just getting control of the river. It's an Infernal Drake first as well, and a Graves very successful at taking that one down, but so is a Kha'Zix. Especially with all the kills and gold that he had for himself, so soloing Drake's out is always a Kha'Zix special. For the fight. most part, it's just wards in the river first, just getting control of the neutral areas of the map and setting themselves up. For Pentagram, Diffuse, control the lanes, and for Kaboom right now, mid's on. Yeah, gank every lane, his Rangers. Pedigree today, although he does jump towards the turret. Great shot though from Jinkato and Ranger makes it too. Incredible shot on the bottom side of the map. There's a lot of trading here as well. Ooh, a little too many shots with the flash pulverized combo. They've got the ignite down as well. Ryo gonna still chase, needs maybe a couple more autos, but not gonna be enough to get the kill there. Instead, the stun charging up, but doesn't grab it. Super close. So they get a kill in the mid lane. They actually don't die to once here as well, who is playing aggressively towards the opponents. So Navigated decently from the side of Kaboom overall, and the flash actually from Titan was something that you love to see from him. The aggression was there, but because the kill was not, it's actually just summoners gone, and perhaps an opportunity presented to their opponents to go down there. Yeah, let's we'll see. This one again, the Ranger again, just ganking every lane. And he just does so much damage. The challenging smite, the preemptive jump as well, forcing the sideways flash, and he was flashing towards his team. So definitely still the correct direction but the shelf was saved the entire time from Jinkedo and he finds it. Yep, level six now on Talia as well. Both are in fact in mid, so maybe we'll see if you can shove the lanes and get out with the little assist gold he's got. Has doing a nice job. Crushes that pillar. Xantine's still safe right now on the Vlad. His mid lane starts to equalize quite soon as well. A lot of the push will be belonging towards Jinkedo just as much as Raumane. And that means that movements around the map start to actually do some work for Kaboom once again. You've got the Talia wall. Has to be a teleport match from Ramane for the most part. Otherwise he'll be left behind. And this is that opportunity where you group up as multiple members. You get the Kha'Zix going and he's now 2-0. You dive bottom lane. Yeah, unfortunately for Ramane, thanks to the pressure that Ranger showed earlier. Doesn't have the TPs. So certainly a lot of opportunities here. As Ranger picks up the red buff. We're gonna move things around. One count from six. The blue buff is available, but he shouldn't be doing that one. However, he'll give a blue to Jin uh, Jinkedo. So he'll push the lane, then he'll get the Gromp, he'll tick six. I feel like in a minute from this moment, they should actually be diving the bottom lane. There's no flash on Yutori Moyashi. Yeah, also ulti's probably up for the bot duo as well. So certainly all the setup done nicely here. Kaboom, again, looking to play with their pressure. Use these aggressive picks and crowd control potential. They're still not up too much gold. Closing in on a thousand, but not there yet. But that could change pretty quickly as Ranger, with those first two kills already, is looking for more. 
And there he is, six. Evolve that R as expected. Enemy red buff. For the jungle now. He'll sneak in here once, might lose his red. Oh, gonna oh. get jumped to rehab with a great play over the wall and once just goes down Ranger. Makes it three for three. Look like the hex flash potentially yep. from Rehab there to get over the red buff wall. Straight to the infernal drake as well. They don't even go bottom lane. They don't need to if they can find where once is in the jungle. They have the summoner spells, they get the kills, they get everything that they could possibly want. Quick red refresh as well. Stinkato also roaming down to ensure this goes down. We'll commit a couple stones to the Drake, and it goes over. Another cheeky Hex flash towards the bottom lane. May just clear this out. Remember, the Talia is just around the corner as well. Ninja also still here. He's going to get spotted. Maybe this is the dive. Looks like it. There's the wall. Going to cut them off. There's nowhere to go. The ult there slowing them down. Titan is getting some poke in the Guardians. Nice, great play there from Gang, but he misses the hook. Yutori now going to be crushed down. Rehab will die, but Yutori is the trade. And that's still a worthwhile trade. They get the Alistar for the Caitlyn. That actually still gives them the ability to push in the bottom lane. It forces Ramane to get here. And he's going to be here far too late to actually stop the kill from happening. It means that Chitan can actually push the wave up. Can recall and spend all of his gold. Now once... In a bit of trouble. In danger again. Ranger also stealthing up. Has the flash ready to go. Flashes in. Gets another kill. That's a big old Kha'Zix now running around on Summoner's Drift. We're at a point where 4-0, the second he purchases his items, he will start one-hitting people. And that is oddly exciting to look towards. I mean, we haven't seen, you know, too many aggressive junglers really just get in and go off. Even Trundles, even Olaf. When they get there, finally often build supportive items. Not Kha'Zix, Rusty. He is still going for the damage. Kind of hope you go straight to a, a dusk blade. Don't actually finish your jungle item, even though you've got the two long sword paths. Oh, we're gonna get blue. No, looking for range. Not gonna find him. Sneaky, sneaky Kazix. Oh, not too sneaky. Zantines flash. Nice, no, sneaky now. All right, very nice. Duke's back into the brush. And team channels are slow just in case. And I was hoping for a flash over the wall, but wrong league. He's gonna be okay. Yeah, it's not the LPL. They are, they are the only ones that flash. By all these things, kick back in. I'm sorry. <laughs> Casting with you again. I just assume everyone's flashing over every wall. My bad. My bad. It's Jinkato. Oh, gonna run, uh, get a what up the Raptors. Watch this again. This was a thing of beauty. The hex flashed the invisibility from the bush as well. It feels like two assassins just came out of nowhere, but one of them is a giant cow in a onesie. They executed incredibly well. Even the Talia wall knocking Riem towards the team, not blocking him off. The timing was good. He does need to get sacrificed out of a great play from Gang, but there's nothing that's going to save his own AD carry's life. Remember that he had no flash. Yep, nicely done there. Yeah, Blue Buff going to go over. The room is doing such a good job setting up these situations and should be in prime position to snowball this Kha'Zix to a uh, very strong mid-game advantage. It's once, he's going to spot Riev. Playback is nice. Hook landing, but oh, he's just back in. Three-man pole, but might be a bait. Oh, well, once again, the sacrifice is made, but this time there is no trade. Yeah, there's not going to be anyone there quick enough. T Chitan was nearby. Ranger was also there. You saw a potential collapse from Jinkero. No flash actually used by Riev because he chooses to turn around. He could have flashed to safety. You can see the communications of Kaboom. They wanted to go forwards. They wanted to try and turn that play around. He's just far too squishy, yeah, more pretty, than he thought. Pretty strong singular goal here. And Ranger is going to sneak into this brush. This is a 2v3. Oh, Yatori, no. though. Oh, no. Going to get opened up on. Flashes out. They have to block the bullets. Chitan curves one around and gets the kill on Yutori. No one blocks for him, so he's just going to die. Chitan's about to do some serious damage, and now Jinkedo's here as well. Back ready with the ulti. Talia Angle wants to maybe look. Instead, they go for turret damage. You just take the chip at this point. You're happy with the kill. You force once again a Caitlyn back. Nice hook, actually. Oh, good play as well. Titan forced to flash. Still taking damage. Jinkato back over the wall. Riev back with a grave. Ranger on stop. Another kill going over. Kaboom! Lining them up now. I can't blame Gang for that one. He had a good hook. He thought he had the moment. He flayed him under the turret. He had a graves nearby and he throws a lantern to him. Then suddenly everyone was there to defuse that. Once again, Jinkato even there to follow it up and ensure the second kill was secured and suddenly they bait themselves further into their own demise. First turret goal gonna go over as well. Shared between Titan and Ranger. I actually like that distribution quite a lot. Some lethality to be purchased from him as a result of that. Feeling real good about himself. Has Warrior has serrated Dirk and Kato is just laying into Ramune hey, now in the match. Look at the items right now. There's absolutely no reason that he should be currently laning if he hasn't shopped in quite some time. Yep. He needs to purchase a full item, so we're feeling a little bit better about himself now, but didn't teleport, couldn't really help his bottom lane, hasn't really been in a position to assist, it feels like. And now TP's back to lane. I mean, I can't really blame him, but Kaboom's just done such a good job playing with the timings, understanding the situation in the game, and just 
executing so well in this bot lane pressure. And you can't fault this hook. That's just a good hook. It aims for the Duke. The Lantern's there. He plays everything like you would expect out of a Thresh. But they stand close to each other. They get in the headbutt pole range. Another hook's on. He's going up right now. So that team's going to get caught out. 1v3, even in Sanguine Pool. Ooh, maybe last the night. Keep getting away. Oh my goodness, what an escape artist. He does get himself away. The flash has to be used, but he's secure. Karma can keep the tether when you're in the pool, so he wasn't able to get away like oh, that Ranger. No, still the big Raptor first. Oh, oh no, he's getting the bigger prize. Dinkato oh, takes him down, and Ranger gets the Raptor. My god, man. There is no safe space on Summoner's Rift to be a jungler right now. 5-0 and 4. The mid laner picks up the kill, but Ranger sets it up once again. He is a sneaky human being. And Pentagram, right idea, swap away, get out of the pressure in bot lane, but the trades are not going to be favorable, and Ranger, when you swap like this, he has so much control of the rift. Yeah, you know the Kaboom when they've got a gold lead in the early game. It was mentioned before, 100% win rate in all of their games. Well, this is not just a gold lead for them anymore. This is a 14-minute 4,000 gold lead. So far, so good. As now, I'm, when, I'm just wondering when the Dust Blade will be finished. I assume it's soon. Yeah, he's got a little of gold, so pretty soon. Did, take the, did yeah. take the detour to worry that you were mildly displeased with. But uh, again, this is just going to keep happening. You can't keep doing this, buddy. Oh, Kitori's like, uh, how do I live? Ranger's like, you don't. That poor bloke. There is no such thing as safe. Why are they even near the jungle? Don't go there. Every brush has a Karen and a Kha'Zix in it in this game. And Kaboom just piling up the gold. Where are you 5K going? Now. He's gone topside. They're going to try and grab something. That's something maybe a Vlag with no flash. But uh, looks like, yeah, Rehab flash pop combo. Lantern is nice. Ranger not there this time to shred someone down. And there's the other knockdown Zantin. So get a kill. But Titan gets a kill on the other side. He sniped Ramune. I mean, they got one in the end in the top lane, so you do take the kill because you've got it, but you're losing turrets. You're getting picked off in mid, and the pressure is still there from the macro of the Brazilian team. The vision control enables the picks. They have an absurd amount of wards in the red side jungle right now, and that is constantly enabling them. Bonus bug vision two from the Kha'Zix. As the uh, Sol is down the next Drake pretty easily. Has a mountain of gold to go spend too. We'll join Inga that Drake is just picked up. Make it 1,800 to spend, Rusty. It's gonna be a very happy man. Came to the realization that you can call it the Great Ocean Road. It was an ocean drake. I just thought you should know that one. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Future use as well. <laughs> Has uh, getting things pushing in the top side, but ooh, she turns like, I never met farm I didn't like. Of course, this is just the initial parts of the mid lane pick. Where it looks like he's going to be okay. And he's definitely not okay. He's in there. Oh, the flash at the end. It's a tragedy. I mean, the scary thing is that he had flash the entire time, Ramune, when the first pole combo came out of the Alistar. Perhaps could have got himself to safety and have kept the health bar. So he lost in the first place. Riev. Not cut on the Paz. Paz running away. 2v3. Great double pulp gets Barely gets the gym through the wall. Alistar trying to survive. Maybe a trade kill forthcoming. Heal burn. They're going to try and protect the Alistar, but the ult is about to run out. Will has been sapped by Utori Moyashi. They're grouping now. It seems that the LGL side are very aware of the state of this game. They're just going to constantly try and find those picks. And I will give some serious credit to Gang. He is hitting every threshold oh, right now. Everything is so scary. Ranger stalking oh, oh. through the jungle. Oh, Ramune. Ramune. Oh, no. uh, you can't know that he's there, but it's his troublesome. Tether used though will at least alleviate oh, some done. of the damage. He's done right now. Gets a ward down instead. Blue, though, does go over to the intended target in Karma. And he brings four people to the blue side jungle to protect the graves when he looks towards just taking down a Gromp. That's how scary he becomes. And with four people there, just wal waltz on over to the mid lane. Yep. Thus, way he's completed for the Karsik, so... Certainly we're going to pop some people. Good damage to the mid tier two as well. Again, with all the pressure, he's able to pull uh, 1v1 AD carry under the top lane tower. Doesn't happen every day. Ulti by Chitan. Does no he have mana. the mana? Yep. Nope. If he had mana, that was absolutely a dead Caitlyn, or at least a fancy foot Caitlyn required to survive. Rev also now coming up here. It's a full collapse. Ooh, here comes Talia as well. Ranger also pretty speedy. Oh, this wall's gonna be good, and it is! He's gonna dive the turret, they commit the TP as well. Oh no, they brought everyone to Ranger, but Yutori escapes Shinkato, though still takes down his support. And once he's trying to run away, but that's the wrong way to go. Zantines gets a kill on the board. Kaboom gonna take down the turret as well. Yeah, it's gonna collapse towards top side. They make that work again. They push top lane, they poke out Yutori Mayashi, they prevent him from being strong and then they all just show up and they've got enough damage to secure kills regardless. And frankly, 
I feel really bad for Thresh right now. He is doing so much work to keep his team alive. Another ridiculous hook. But in a losing game, that's just completely forgotten. Yep, hook, you know, big big bug towards you and bad things are going to happen. Just look down the center of the scoreboard for Kaboom. That's a lot of numbers in the front column and no numbers in the middle. You haven't played League before, that's a really good thing. Yeah, and if only Rehab's dying, then it's working perfectly well for them. But I will highlight here in this situation, it's just constant victories from Kaboom. Look at the hook here from Gang as he's about to die. A big part in ensuring that Yutoro Mayashi will stay alive. No one hits hooks like that. That just looked fancy. And of course, once it's going to maybe look towards Chitani. It was the closest target, but safety is never a feature near there. Yeah, and the snowball's starting to get a little out of control at this point. Deathcap second is the choice Chinkato is making. Two items already finished for Chitan and the Dustblade, with more swords to come as Paz and Zantines are going to have some sort of scuffle. Oh my god, he's so fast. He didn't have Mobis, he's gonna try and hunt somebody. Oh, he's found Ramune. Gets out of the way though. He's gonna be alright, just poking around, playing with his food effectively at the moment. The gold lead is stretched completely, so we were at a point where 4,000, maybe you can hold. Oh god. Yeah, I mean, there's just people everywhere. You can't check every brush safely. One's gonna be forced to burn the flash. Almost gets Junk Chitan. Gonna try and find the shots. Three, one more to go. Just chill on it. Oh, we got him. Not the guy you wanted though, once stays alive. Tarot does not though, great zoning with the Jinot does get them their fifth structure. Vladimir also rotating nearby, Zantines walking towards the middle lane, threatening the dive perhaps with the cannon there, it's fairly tanky. They've bought a lot of time and a lot of damage on this. Not even take Baron now, but Paz lining up a big ulti, gets a three-man knock! Rhea down! And now Paz gonna dive into the backside as well, looking for more. Is he gonna try Titan? Titan forced to flash, ace in the hole! Not enough damage. And Paz also too low. Tantine's back over, that might be his doom. As the Flash gonna go back in with the Empower Q. Emo Plague down, needs a couple more spots of damage, but not gonna land it. Not gonna get the kills, everything does fizzle out. You have one more death on Riev. He's the only person that's being sacrificed from the Brazilian side right now. The rest of the roster losing health, still a squishy composition. And still a fairly hard to execute composition. But they're okay, the kills aren't gonna be there. Tantine sees the juiciest cannon creep of your life. Gonna one v one down Shelly here. But runs back towards mid again, starting the pressure. And I mentioned Baron hadn't spawned yet. Spawned now. I think they're going over there as we'll watch this again. We have to see what happens mid. Another hook from Gang, but of course the, the start from Paz is the person you have to talk about. He kicks this one off in style, knocking up three people. And whilst he does get that done, can't quite headbutt the enemy champions. He only finds purchase on the wall. Ramone is still doing some damage when it hits the carries, and there is a lot of pretty much exclusively carries yep. on the side of Kaboom. So they still have to play the rest of this game out well. Oh, Ranger. <laughs> Such a bold bug. Jumps into the wards the enemy team and just gets some poke down. But again, it's all set up now for the Baron. Jantines, no TP, but can swap back if he makes it to base. Riev looking for the face check. Oh, oh great hook. They take down the jungler and he burnt his flash. A two for one special. Dead set magnetic hooks right now. Cannot miss the target. Paz now also looking in mid lane. He's going to find Jinkedo. Knock up. Riev's like, all right, we'll try and get you out. But again, the old down. The, another great pick from Japan, perhaps. Oh. On the way, but not quite there. Oh, nice hook again. But Riev for the old to get him out. The shove towards him. But Paz, yeah, he wants to tank up. He's going to go there. He's going to try and knock one back. They get one back in towards the turret. And Chitan finds a stun. Look at Paz again. But Gang is able to block that up. And there is some serious fight in the system for the Japanese team right now. They are really going forwards. But Zantines, he's got a big flank right now. And here it comes. Three man Hemo. Still moving forwards. Then we pull chunks down. Gang, goodbye, sir. As Zantans gets the kill, Yutori slain by Jinkato again on the Talia, and this turret's gonna get busted down. And it feels like you were just waiting for the moment where they start to group up as multiple members. Vladimir, a big part of the team fighting success for them. He gets a flank after all said and done. It does result in the inhibitor. It also gives an infernal Drake over to them like they needed a second one. But how far ahead they are. Ranger gets added to the list of uh, people with a death on the Brazilian side in this game. But Jinkato, once again, we've talked a lot about this Kha'Zix and how much he's done. We talked a lot about Zantines in his Gangplank last game, but I thought Jinkato was really good coming into this tournament. I think today has proved a lot more of that. But let's watch this again, because this was a little less good. Physically, yeah, it starts with him getting caught out of position. <laughs> Didn't really know where they were. Paz was predicting a flash from Jinkato, to be fair. It's not just a 50-50, it's about 30% chance that he hit that at all. The follow-up here is actually really nice from Riev. The pulverized flash headbutt under the turret 
once can't apply damage, then he has to use everything to escape. And the Jin had him with the snipe. So very nicely executed upon as a countermeasure, as a reaction. And then Zantines just comes in, hits the ultimate, and shows that someone is going to die in this situation. And it happens to be Gang. Yep, again, caught out with a good hook. But uh, Kaboom's still so far ahead in this game. Cl closing in on 10,000 gold ahead with a mountain and two infernals. We've seen a lot of Baron's end games. This is probably on that same list right now. Oh yeah, this is a particular Baron. It's not going to have a banner of command buff by any means. And I will say again, the risk is high for the Brazilian side. They're going to use this composition to end the game. It may actually revolve it around a dive. They've got an Alistar for it. They've got a Vladimir for it. They can get that done. The other big thing here, actually, Pastry, is the Talia wall. Once they get control with vision around this Baron area, they place down the wall, they secure themselves the Baron free of charge. Well, pretty good price. They do spot them as they started the Baron, but it turned up by a control wall there. As you called it, Rusty, great wall there from Jinkato, but doesn't quite cut off enough, but it's actually maybe a ruse and Deeds. Gonna look to try and cut to up. He's in a 1v3, but he's gonna chunk them out. Good ult, though. He's gonna knock him back up. They do secure the Baron, but they lose their Vlad. They lose one. It does look like they'll have to disengage. You take the trade for what it's worth, even though that is a very poor trade. The Pentagram by time by getting the kill. They get it off one of the top laners. They will be sitting in side lanes. That helps a lot for Paz. Lot was expended into getting that kill, however, from the top laner of Pentagram. Both summoner spells and the ultimate. Down he goes, though, to the bot side to defend the incoming Baron pressure from Kaboom. Until then, though, this is how they got it. And the wall is good to cut off anyone that isn't already here. The lantern will provide a second person access to the area. And Zantine's approach is to actually zone them away. And whilst it looks like he might be doing a very effective job of zoning them away, there's just too much crowd control from the Pentagram roster, so he's never going to be safe. It means he does go down, uses summoners of his own. Thankfully, Baron was already secured by the time anything else could happen, so Kaboom, again, walk away with a trade they're happy to make. Now, just about 10k ahead, Ranger dipping into some brush, does get spotted briefly, but goes in Viz after hitting the brush with a control ward in it. Already have one inhib as well, so Zantine's going to get things pushing in the bot side. Does not have TP and doesn't have Baron either, so it might take yep. a bit longer than he likes. This is one of those moments for Pentagram. Backs against the wall, 9,000 gold deficit, but if you find the Thresh Hook, perhaps you look towards the 4v5 and try and get a team fight. Maybe enough to get you over the line, but even then, the execution has to be outstanding. All in all, back up and ready, but Kaboom, know this, they'll be patient for now as they try and caress their waves in towards the enemy turrets. Six turrets down, but still a tier two in top lane is the most obvious weakness in the pentagram structures. Yep, and this is where you look towards the Kaboom Macro. Can they just get themselves the turrets? Can they avoid the fights completely when they're in a 4v5, knowing that Vladimir can't join them? Is there any chance for them to utilize that Baron buff effectively? And it feels like so far, yes, they're gonna push towards all of the inner turrets, the free objectives to be seen. And they're actively aware of the hooks. Ranger also looking for a flank, trying to catch any stragglers. But good damage again. Zantine's not here. They're going to opt in for the 4v5. Flash force there out of Jinkato does hit Titan with the all ulti, but no one else at all can follow up that far away. <laughs> Just taking the damage. The fleet footwork will help a lot for Chitan to get some health back if he hits a crit onto something, but may even just opt into Looks like a honey fruit. He's going to be fine. Zantine's is also just pushing. This is the danger of the commitment. Like you said, they do stay away from that fight despite having to burn some resources. And Nibidatara falls down. That leaves three here in top side to take down this tier two. Eight turrets to one now. Running out of room to defend. And things to defend as well. Gang looking for the play. Great flush by Cheetah, my god. He was on the mark, but the response was definitely there. Both summoner spells now expended. You'll feel good about getting rid of the flash from the Jin, but often when these fights start to pan out, he is too far away to even be in range of. That means that it buys once again a little bit more time. 45 seconds left on that Baron buff existing. The hooks are still connecting here and there. All in all, coming back off as well. Jinkato with a great wall. Gonna actually zone you. Tori in the rear. Looks, looks for blood, tries to go for it. But Paz on the other side, tying up Zantitu again is kind of 1v4 zoning the rest of the team off the objective. Ranger also stepping in, wants to try and find a kill. We have again back in Utori, wrong spot to be standing, shot back by Jinkato, and the kill is over. Ranger the hook again by Gang, but it just doesn't matter. Kabuma too far ahead, Paz now trapped as Zantines is power diving the back line. Talia will zone them out, they'll take two in his minimum here, and with the third also open. Paz zoned out of his own base as well, look at where he's recalling, the only spot that may have no vision from the Kaboom roster. All the inhibs will definitely go down here, 
No Baron buff, so ending the game isn't the easiest thing, but with how far ahead they are, there's a chance that they can, and they're going for it anyway. Yeah, they're gonna go for it here. They can see that they're alive in the group. If they can take this game, they need to keep going. Gangno is not gonna move out of the shot, but it doesn't matter. The damage is there. The Nexus Turret on the right, about to fall down. Ranger losing his 1v1 to pass. Oh no, he's gonna go down as well. He'll leave a blemish on the record. In fact, Pentagram still fighting it out. Rehab also going to drop Pentagram with everything dead except their Nexus. Will keep on fighting. Chitan ace in the hole. Damage going down. Ramune looking for the snipe, but doesn't quite grab it. Instead, it's the pill that takes him down and keeps them in the game. And definitely just an overextension there from the Kaboom roster. Good punish out of Pentagram. Paz in particular is 5 0 and 2 right now, as the rest of his team is losing the game around him. And he's doing the best that he can to continue to carry in these team fights. Ranger just wrongly attempting to 1v1 against the Orn here. Trying to maybe zone him away. He jumps on top of him and dies. And Gang also hits a hook at the start, though he goes down. And you can see this is where the first kill comes in, gets the flash. Remember, no Baron buff. No real push potential from the minions themselves. The champions have to hit the turrets. And they've been fighting for two minutes, maybe more. So to actually end that game, and they hadn't shopped and spent all the money they'd earned, wasn't going to be the easiest thing to do. It required mistakes from Pentagram, and Paz is too strong. Yeah, an overextension for sure, but I'm sure that Baron Power Play will be more than enough to try and close out this game. Pentagram are going to mount one of the single biggest comebacks in Professional League if they can somehow stave off this assault, but it is so unlikely. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're waiting maybe for a Baron in 1 minute and 20 seconds. If you get the chance to steal that away, and then you survive the push in a 4v or minus 4v5, then you might have a chance. And then for Kaboom, they've got such a big lead. All they need to do is push to take this Nexus, and then just one more game could maybe give them first. They'll go back in, re-up, looking for the knockup. Has the only one caught, but a good shove back. Does move it on towards the team. Ranger again still stalking. Great root there from the Deadly Flourish. Ranger wants him again. He's another massive hook. Has so low, finally dies to Jitan. And I think Kaboom just have a bit too much strength. Zantiz from the flank. A massive zone to the kill of the game. And a shove will signal the ace. Jinkado stays deathless and Kaboom hold on. And the back-to-back -back victories are secured by Kaboom, the Brazilian roster here. Fantastic showing once again. And most of the blemishes in this game were only experienced after they were too far ahead to really be stopped. The snowball had started. And they keep that momentum going forwards into Supermassive. And that's the big thing. I mean, they're alive, but fate is not in their own hands. They will go up against the titans of this group in Supermassive. They must win to get a chance, and then they'll be waving the Die Wars banners <laughs> to watch that game and see what shenanigans can unfold in this group. But they have done what they needed to do here, Rusty, and given themselves the chance. Yeah, considering how the first day went for them, they are set up in the best way that they possibly could be, considering those circumstances. And so far on the day, they have looked powerful. It doesn't look like anything can really stop them or can keep them down. And that's why we talk about the super massive matchup. We've only seen one game from them yet. And in that game, they were exposed a little bit. Of course, they may not have been the full strength of super massive, but it was good enough. And from what we've seen of Kaboom, it may even be better. It certainly was. And there's a barn burner on the schedule for next time. But when we return, super massive attempt to maintain their spot in first as they face the Diables. Game four.